everybody, Mr. Gajewski here. Welcome to 8th grade math. Today is lesson 2.1.1. What is a variable? Exploring variables and expressions. In algebra and in future mathematics courses, you will work with unknown quantities that can be represented using variables. Today, manipulatives called algebra tiles will be introduced to help you and your teammates answer some important questions, such as what is a variable and how can we use it? 2-1, your teacher will distribute a set of algebra tiles for your team to use during this course. As you explore the tiles, address the following questions with your team. Be prepared to share your responses with the class. All right, so if you are doing this virtually, you will not have access to the tiles. So in order to access the tiles, we're gonna go ahead and we are going to minimize our screen and then up here at the top where it says eTools, and go ahead and click that. Tiles, it's the very first one. It will open up a new tab automatically. First thing that I like to do is open up a background. So I click the drop down menu and I select grid. This is one that I like to work with the most. Next, I open up algebra tiles. This is how you access the algebra tiles. So let's flip back here to the book. And let's think about these bullet points. How many shapes are there? What are all of the different shapes? I'm gonna have you pause the video, go through these three bullet points on your own, and then come back to the video and I will discuss the answers here. So how many different shapes are there? Well, in terms of shapes, uh, I guess you could say there's six, all right. Uh, what are all of the different shapes? So right now, I'm just thinking about the shapes. I see some squares and rectangles, three rectangles and one, two, three squares. How are the shapes different and how are they all the same? Well, they all have four sides uh, that would make them the same. Different, different lengths, right? Different areas. Some have, uh, some sides are actually the same length. You can see that here. And you can see that here. If I double click, I can rotate. If I single click, I make it a negative, but we're not gonna worry about negatives yet. All right, how are the shapes related? Very similar to uh, how they are the same, right? We are working with a bunch of quadrilaterals, four sides. And then which fit together and which do not. Okay, so fit together, which do and which don't. So as you can see, the y and the y squared do, the x and the x squared do. And actually with the xy, we can see the short side fits with the x's. And the long side fits with the y's. They don't quite click together here, that's all right. Uh, and then the one tile, fits partly with uh, some of the sides of the X and the Y's. Uh, nothing for the XY. 2-2, two two, draw a picture of each type of tile on your paper. So I'm gonna ask you again to pause the video here and then go ahead and sketch a copy of all six of these tiles in your notebook. Please go ahead and pause here. All right, the algebra tiles will be referred to by their areas. So again, the name of the tile is the area of the tile. Since the smallest square has a length of one unit and its area is one, it's one, excuse me, its area is one square unit. Thus the name of this tile is one or a unit tile. Maybe your drawing of this tile with its side lengths and area. So on your paper, you will not have the one in the middle. So what you're going to have to do is I'm going to go ahead and sketch this. And then I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to label the area in the middle. So the area goes in here, one, where each side length is one. So on our paper, with our smallest square, we write one around each side length.
Can you use the unit tile to find other lengths? Why or why not? Again, go ahead and try this on your own. All right, let's take a look here. So if I take my unit tile, I can see here x. This side length is the same as the unit tile. So this must have a length of 1 or a width of 1. Maybe I can use that to find the length or the height. We can see here it's, it's actually a little bit more than 2 and a little less than 3. We don't know, though. Somewhere between 2 and 3, but we're not really sure. So we don't know. And that would be the same thing for y. If I throw a y in here, 1, 2, 3. It's a little more than 3, and it's quite a bit less than 4. So we cannot do that. But again, we know that the width here is 1. It's the same as the unit tile. If you cannot use the unit tile to measure all of the other side lengths of the other tiles, how can you label them so that you can find their area? Hmm. Take some time on your own to think about this. All right, so since we don't know the length here of this tile and the length here of this tile, we would define them using a variable. Now, they already give us the variable here, but we don't know the length. So we'll just call this unknown x and this unknown y. Now think about the area. 1 times x, 1 times x is x, so the area of this blue tile is x. y times 1 is y. So the area here is y. So that is why we named this tile x and this tile y. Alright, part D, label your drawings and then name the other tiles using their areas. Be sure to use what you know about the area of a rectangle in the area of a square. So let's go ahead and let's flip back to this one. So if I think about the y squared tile, and I want to label this guy, well, it has a length of y, or a width of y, and a length of y. If I were to go ahead and label, all the sides here are equal to y. The area, y times y, we get y squared. Same thing with x squared. These are side lengths x. x times x, we get x squared. Make sure you are labeling all of these in your own notes on paper. And here's a different one. Right? This one's a little special. Okay, these side lengths. The unit tiles aren't going to work here. All right, we can see that the length and the width are not equal to a whole unit, but if I go ahead and I pull out these, this x tile, you can see it has a height of x and a width of y. All right, it is x units tall, y units wide. So the area, x times y, we get x, y. I'm going to go ahead and flip back. So those are the labels for all of our tiles, right? We have the 1, the x, the y, x squared, y squared, and the xy. I'm going to go ahead and clear my annotations and jump back to the book. All right, 2-3 jumbled tiles. You will not be able to do this virtually, so we're going to skip it. All right. 2-4, build each collection of tiles represented, then name the 
name of a collection using simpler algebraic expression if possible. If it is not possible to simplify the expression, explain why not. So at this point again, please pause the video. Go ahead and build all four of these figures on your own, and then see if you can simplify the name. The answers for you to check will be posted on Google Classroom 2.1.1, 2-4, A, B, C, and D. So go ahead and try these on your own. Build them, name them, and then check your answer. And then lastly, 2-5 learning log. In your learning log, explain what a variable is in your own words. Describe each type of tile with a diagram that includes each dimension and an area label. So that's what we did in 2-2. I'm not going to make you do that again. All right, explain what tiles can and cannot be combined. Be sure to include examples to support your statements. Title this entry, algebra tiles and variables, and include today's date. Pause the video, do a little bit on your own, and then I'll go back and check here in the video in a little bit. All right, uh, explain what a variable is in your own words. To me, it's just an unknown uh, value or an unknown quantity. Right, we've described each tile, we've made a diagram of each. Uh, when the tiles can and cannot be combined. Okay, so if I go ahead and then flip back here, tiles that do not have the same area cannot be combined. So for example, the y squared and these four y's. Okay, I can combine all four of these y's together. One, two, three, four y's, four y. The four y's do not mix with the y squared. The y squared, although it has the same length and width, has one side of the y's, doesn't have that one unit here for one of its sides. So these don't mix. This is 4y and y squared. They are not the same. They cannot be combined. So the important part there, they have to have the same area in order to be combined. All right, that is it for today's lesson. Your homework for today is going to be all of the problems from 2.6 to 2.10. If you want more information on why we don't know these lengths, go ahead and read the Methods and Meetings Math Notes box. All right, it'll talk about what it means to be non-commensurate. Okay. That is it for today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.